Okay folks, the weather's not been too good, so uh, I've been doing a project and that project is designing a camera to scope attachment made up from parts purchased at uh, Wilco. So the parts you'll need will be three uh, Wilco mending plates, 100 millimeters long at 75 pence. Uh, you'll also need uh, one corner plate zinc bracket at 75 millimeters, and that's 75p. You'll need uh, two 28 to 29 millimeter clips at 75p, one 25 millimeter clip, millimeter clip at 75p, and you'll need two uh, Wilco stretcher brackets at 50 pence each. The final bracket will be the uh, Wilco corner brace, 75 millimeters at 75 pence. Uh, then you'll also need some nuts and bolts to put it all together, some washers. So the total cost, including the nuts, washers, bolts, will be around £10. So uh, it's quite a good project, not an expensive one. And you'll, you'll then have a bracket that you can fit your camera onto, uh, your rifle scope, and it's got plenty of adjustability. folks <clears throat> I'm back at Tinsley Park Shooting Club today going to do the field test with the camera mount project I've done got to start off by saying it's minus four uh, with a wind chill factor it's, it's probably quite a bit more than that uh, so we'll get on with the test uh, the particular setup I've got set up for the uh, the Nico Sterling scope but uh, it's got enough adjustment in it to work on most scopes anyway. As you can see, the, the two larger rings are attached to the eyepiece and the smaller ring to the actual tube of the scope. Uh, I do find it easier to put the camera on first, so that's a bit fiddly. Uh, the camera I've been using for this is the, uh, the Samsung camera. Uh, I meant to bring a screwdriver and I forgot it. So I'm hoping that I can tighten it up enough. So I put a washer at the bottom and a washer at the top. So I've got it through with my finger, what I do. The actual uh, hole in the, most of the cameras is in the middle of the camera, but you'll find that the, the lens is offset. So you have to make, uh, make that into account when you actually mount the bracket. So I've mentioned how much it costs for the brackets, uh, whatever, but I'm not put into that equation the cost of your tooling. Well, you'll need a hand drill and you'll also need a Dremel. <laughs> well, the Dremel will be to widen the slots on that so you've got plenty of adjustment right and left. Uh, I've also got those adjustments up and down on that one and forward and back on this one. So that's why you need your Dremel. Uh, so I'm just... I'm just uh, making you aware that that's an extra cost if you've not already got one. Uh, but I think most most DIYs have got Dremels and drills. Uh, uh, as I say, this one's just a, a 
pilot project, uh, if rather than normal nuts, if you certain certain uh, nuts on these would be work out better if you got wing nuts for adjustment. This being one of them, but that's something I could uh, I could do eventually. But it's just an idea. So that's that's attached AK now by hand. Uh, what I find it best to do when you do this is get your fingers, open them up to help it on, and it's a really t it's a really tight fit. So, and I say you can adjust the brackets just to get it all lined up. when it's about right to be honest. Okay. But that's that's the camera mounted. It just needs to come up a bit and I think that washer at the bottom should have been on the top and that brings it up just a bit. So I'll do that and then we'll get some views down the lens. But start off, we'll get you a close up on this, just so you can see what needs cutting down and where we need to drill any extra holes. Okay, what you should be aware of uh, with these actual uh, brackets as they're not all in line, the holes that's pre-drilled. Some of them are offset. So the end two holes, that one and that one, are in line. But these, these two here, one's there and one's there. So what I've done, I've put this one in line with that, and this one's I've put that in line with those. So all the all the actual uh, clips are in line. So you don't have to worry about that, but that's what you need to be aware of. So when you drill some extra holes in it, you've got to line them all up so those three are in line. Uh, what I did next was spaced this bar up using a, a nut washer. And then if you notice this one, this was a 75mm right angle bar. I've just used the first two holes, then cut the excess off. Uh, so you got one straight bar there, the other straight bar is on here. This one I've cut down, uh, but also there's adjustment in this, so that's why it's a good idea to have a wing nut, so you can get it lined up and then tighten it. And then if you go back around to the back side of it, we've got the other straight bar there, uh, that's 75mm, then we've got the 75mm uh, right angle beam and that is so I've got a better view of the screen because initially I, I did it going straight down the middle and you can't see your screen that way so I did that and the two little uh, stretcher brackets I did one for that joining that up to that bar and another to mount the camera on uh, I could still probably improve in that by putting that bar either underneath or just cutting some out to see more of the screen. But uh, that's basically it so far. It's uh, still a project in uh, progress at the moment. Uh, so that is that is all the beams, uh, the brackets, what they're for. Uh, pretty simple setup really. Uh, you just got to make sure you get your, your nuts and your bolts and you can space them out with either the nuts and washes or just the nuts to get it where you need it. But like I say, uh, if you've got scopes that's all got the same dimensions at, at the eyepiece and the, uh, the main tube, it's not a problem. But if you've got different scopes with different size uh, eyepieces and centres, it's not so easy. But it's, it's just something I thought I'd set up so... Uh, you could get the shooter's eye view.
but there you go so the next thing will be uh, to look down the lens and actually do some shooting through it now the other problem I have had in the past is the actual screen on the, on that is probably about two inches by three so to get a better view I've got one of these it's a magnifier you can get from the pan shop or places like the pan shop so you can make that uh, three inch screen look like six inches so uh, that's another idea I came up with just just putting some ideas out there for anybody but I mean that can be attached on as well so I uh, hope you've uh, been interested in the project uh, I know it could save you a fortune because some of these skate mounts can cost as much as £200 uh, but it's just, just a way of, if you've got some old bits lying around that you've not used, you can use them OK, I've set the uh, the actual targets for uh, 30 yards I'm not zeroed it in so I'm hoping for the best here <coughs> There we go. Let's see, go for one of them bigger ones. So basically, it's a target setup I did, and they're dessert spoons that are in there. Miss that one, but you get the idea. I mean, the last time it came up, it was windier than this. So it's a bit awkward at the moment. Right, so I've got these. I'm not sure where it's going. I don't know if you can see. Let's go for the top ones again, a bit easier to hit because the. Uh, it's shooting right, so if that's the case, I'll go to the right of that little teaspoon. shots so uh, I'm hoping you've got the gist of this what it's looking like through the actual scope and I've actually moved this by putting the rifle down but uh, you get the idea uh, you get my sort of view now that you can see but yeah not bad uh, it's a uh, work in progress as I should say uh, like I say, uh, if I've got some wing nuts, I'll probably get some wing nuts to suit those and up, uh, bolts. And that'll make all the difference. So, uh, that's the conclusion of the project. Uh, I'll come back to it as the uh, time goes on. But, uh, thanks for watching.